Uh, time is tight, so I'm going to go straight on to the next item of business. Members' debate on motion 2149 in the name of George Adam on Paisley for City of Culture 2021. Please leave quietly. Your names are being taken. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put with those members who wish to speak in the debate. Please press the request to speak buttons now. I call on George Adam to open the debate. Mr Adam, please. Thank you. Thank you, President Officer. Let me talk of a town called Paisley. I'm not one for talking about it much, and I've not mentioned in the past often that it is the place where I was born and bred and brought up and uh, educated. But you probably all believe that this is the easy speech I'll make in this parliament, but you could not be further from the truth because the whole idea for me is the sheer emotion of the speech itself. My town and the people I represent mean so much to me, and I want everyone to understand the positive Paisley vision that I and my fellow buddies have for our town. And quite frankly, presiding officer, I don't want to mess it up. When I was first elected as Paisley's MSP, I spoke of talk, taking a Team Paisley approach to absolutely everything I did. That's why in this place has been bombarded of all with all things Paisley, but it's also become part of the local parlance in Paisley and the whole town now talks of a Team Paisley approach. This bid can make a difference in our town. We only need to look to our neighbours in Glasgow to see how a cultural festival can change people's views on a town or city. When their bold bid for European City of Culture was announced, there was much scepticism at the time. Glasgow was in post-industrial decline and was trying to redefine itself. This and many other festivals and events have shown that Glasgow is indeed one of Europe's greatest cities. We now need everyone to get behind Paisley and their new bold bid to gain UK City of Culture status in 2021. We need to get behind it because the cultural regeneration on the back of this can change the world's view of our hometown. The story of Paisley is an incredible one and what we have achieved is inspiring. Paisley has challenges like many other towns in Scotland but it also has an extremely big heart. One of these many challenges is the fact that we have more listed buildings than any other town or city in Scotland by our bar our nation's capital. That in itself provides us with an opportunity to use such great venues as Martyrs Memorial Church, Paisley Town Hall, and of course the last pre resting place of Marjorie Bruce, Paisley Abbey. Marjorie Bruce, the mother of the Stuart dynasty in Scotland and daughter of one of our country's greatest heroes, Robert the Bruce. It's a place where the cottage weavers of the 19th century became very radical in their political ideals. Of course, the Paisley weavers were the forefront of the Scottish insurrection of 1820. Although to say that, presiding officer, is slightly inaccurate because the weavers in Paisley decided to do it in 1819. After the Peterloo massacre in August the same year, a mass rally was organised in Paisley on Saturday the 11th of September. Radicals came from all over the west of Scotland. A crowd of 18,000 gathered at the meeting place as a outside the town as a local band from Nielsen played Scots Wahe. There were many speakers that day and the crowd dispersed. Some decided to march down the high street. By 10pm, the riot act was read and the cavalry were charging down the streets of Paisley pursuing peaceful protesters. But, presiding officer, this is Paisley. The crowds were not deterred and pitched battles occurred for several days. It wasn't until a week later, on September the 18th, that an uneasy quiet returned to the town. One year later, they would march under the banner in the Scottish insurrection of 1820 of Scotland free or a desert. Later in the same century, the weavers once again were in dispute, this time with the corks. The Cots were the merchants who bought the famous Paisley pattern shawls and uh, they wouldn't pay them for the small shawl, which is a small weave that actually holds the shawl together. They wouldn't pay because it actually wasn't seen. They, they fought on and uh, they eventually withheld their labour and eventually in 1856, they actually had the opportunity, the courts relented. And the first weekend of July became that celebration for success and a local holiday, which is still celebrated today in our annual small shot day summer festival. But not only are we a town of political radicals, we've also given the world much culturally, particularly in places like Fergusley Park. If you googled Fergusley Park, you would see uh, all the stats on deprivation, but deprivation has never defined Paisley or Fergusley Park. This is a part of Paisley that's given us singer-songwriter Jerry Rafferty, playwright and artist John Byrne. Mr Byrne recently told The Herald, Paisley is a remarkable place. I hope to be involved and I support the bid. I support it wholeheartedly. I thank Fergusley Park every day for my life, for providing me all the information I ever needed about life. It was the best place I have ever been. 
It is happy circumstances that we ended up there as a family. The language, the life, everything. I couldn't have had, got a better education. Presiding officer, in that same interview, he also said, I could not care less about politics. Politics is a guise adopted by crooks, criminals and bumbags. But they're not all like that. I can only hope, presiding officer, that I am one of the ones that is not only like that. But I can't vouch for the rest of you. <laughs> but this is another example of a radical and opinionated town and it's steeped in culture. Paisley is a town that brought us Paolo Nettini, whose dad Alfredo still owns and works in Castle Vici Chip Shop in U Street, which has been in the family since 1914. And of course, Paolo will headline Edinburgh's Hogman A party this year. There's A-list Hollywood actor Gerard Butler, and let's not forget Doctor Who. David Tennant, another Paisley buddy, who along with Stephen Moffat, producer, showrunner and writer, have brought the longest running science fiction TV series in the world to a whole new generation of fans. The disco diva from Hunter Hill, Jacqueline McKinnon, but you may know her better as Kelly Marie. Her disco anthem, Feels Like I'm In Love, will no doubt get played quite often as we head towards the festive season. There's Robert Tannehill, the poet and contemporary of Robert Burns. And also, now, can we talk about the weather, presiding officer? We invented it. Not only have we given Scotland's broadcasters weather people like Heather Reid and Sean Batty, but the forecasting of weather was built in the mathematical equations of Lewis Fry Richardson, a Quaker born in Newcastle in 1881. His research work in predicting the weather took him to the Met Office. However, in 1920, when the Met Office became part of the Ministry of Defence, he promptly resigned and became a pacifist because of his pacifist beliefs. And he had been a, as he had been a conscious objector during the First World War, it was difficult for him to find a university position to continue his research. Luckily, he found a home in the Paisley College of Technology, who in its modern guise is the University of the West of Scotland. He was able to continue his work with the co and became college principal before retiring in 1940. So the mathematical equations involved in weather predictions came from Paisley. It's not our fault the weather isn't good, but no doubt somebody at UWS is working on that machine as we speak. And ironically, the college was originally called the Paisley Technical College and School of Art. And that brings us back to what Paisley 2021 bid is all about. It's about telling the world the fantastic story of our town, its history, its achievements, but most importantly, the story of its people, Paisley Buddies. Our local newspaper, Paisley Daily Express, published since 1874, supported the bid and asked buddies to say why I love Paisley. I love Paisley because it's my town, my place in the world. It's the place, I've got a bit here that says, don't greet. You know, it's the place that says, uh, my own family have been there since Does it also say conclude? <laughs> it's where I met my wife, presiding officer Stacey, and our daughter Jessica was born. It's where my grandparents worked in Fergusley Mill and brought their family up in Fergusley Park. You know, this bid is about telling the world our story, who we are and what we want to achieve as Paisley Buddies. Being proud of our place in the world, in all honesty, considering what we've achieved so far, there's absolutely no need for the rest of you to thank us. But what we are asking you to do is back this bid, back our bid for the UK City of Culture in 2021. Join us and ensure that this great town gets its moment in the spotlight. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr Paisley. Um, I'm, some members haven't pressed their button. Could they make sure they've done it, please? It's very, very tight for time, so you have to be tight yourself. Joan McAlpine, followed by Morris Golden. I've got ten people, nine people wanting to speak now. Uh, thank you very much, presiding officer. And uh, with your permission, I'm afraid I have to leave shortly after my speech as I have another appointment to go to. I would like to congratulate George Adam on securing this debate on Paisley for City of Culture 2021. 20, and I'm delighted to be able to speak in support of the bid, having been born and brought up just down the river from Paisley and Gourock, and having had the chance to enjoy many of its fantastic cultural offerings over the year. I do think the Abbey is one of the medieval buildings, uh, one of the greatest medieval buildings in Scotland, not least because it is still the living heart of the community, and I have very fond memories of attending my daughter's school concerts in the Abbey and will never forget hearing uh, Forry's Requiem, the most wonderful choral piece echoing round the cloisters in 2011. It's a truly magnificent setting for music and I imagine there'll be a great deal of it in 2021. Uh, I can also highly recommend the Paisley Museum and its textile collection, which I visited with the family 
several times over the years, and I was unaware of the Paisley Perils exhibition currently reimagining the Paisley pattern for the digital age, but having read about it in the 12 fascinating facts about Paisley, um, uh, presented by George Adam, I hope to get the chance to see it during uh, the holidays. Uh, I recently learned that my grandmother, Mary McCarn, uh, was a teenage uh, worker in Coates Mill, uh, travelling there from Greenock, and uh, I'm delighted that the unsung labour of so many women like her will have a, a legacy in the £56 million plan to create a national museum of textiles in Paisley. The purpose of the UK City programme is to encourage the use of culture and creativity as a catalyst for change, and Paisley is very well placed to achieve that. And I welcome the bid's commitment to use the title to address inequality, poverty, and create new jobs for local people. It will, of course, enrich the lives of thousands of Paisley buddies by giving them access to unique cultural experiences and bringing a sense of pride to the town, something whose benefits are unquantifiable but are known to touch on improved wellbeing and educational attainment. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when Glasgow was European City of Culture back in 1990. Uh, that is different, of course, from this UK title, but the effect is similar. In the 1990 accolade was one of the first of its kind in Scotland. It was an exciting and transformative event. And as a young person at the time in Glasgow, I have wonderful memories of that year and the cultural experiences that I can say really changed me. And I particularly remember the collaboration uh, of Liz Lockhead and Jerry Mulgrew and the ex experimental piece of theatre, uh, Jock Thompson's Bairns at the Tramway. Uh, anyone who saw it, including myself, looked at Scotland and our national bard in a completely different way. And I'm, I think it's probably ripe for revival. Uh, perhaps if Paisley 21 uh, 2021 goes ahead, um, that could be considered. But of course, one of our greatest uh, playwrights, as George Adam has said, is himself from Paisley, and that is uh, that's John Byrne. And his Slab Boys, I think probably even earlier in my life, was one of the most inspirational things I've ever seen when I saw it in the BBC, um, as I think it was one of the plays for today. I'd never seen a portrayal of urban Scotland quite like it. And of course, it's hilarious as well as touching. And Byrne's particular genius uh, coming from Fergusley Park, like uh, George Adam, was the richness of the Scots language in that play. And I've been a fan of his work ever since, once attending an all-day staging of the trilogy at Glasgow King's Theatre. So uh, I couldn't imagine anything better than the, um, the City of Culture coming to Paisley and getting the opportunity to see more of Burns', Burns work in his uh, hometown. Thank you very much. Thank you. Call Maurice Golden to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Maurice Golden, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I would like to thank George Adam for securing this member's debate and congratulate Paisley on launching its bid for UK City of Culture 2021. I'm supporting Paisley's bid for three re reasons. Firstly, Paisley deserves it. Secondly, Paisley needs it. And finally, Scotland stands to benefit. First, Paisley deserves the award because it is already a city rich in culture. From a world-renowned textile design known as the Paisley Pattern to some of UK's finest architecture, Paisley has a unique artistic expression, producing household names including Paolo Nettini, Gerald Butler and David Tennant. Paisley has nurtured some of Scotland's greatest theatrical talent and represents the best of Scottish culture to the rest of the world. Paisley is also the setting for the famous court case of Donoghue versus Stevenson, which sets out the basic criteria under Scots law for determining uh, whether a duty of care exists. The case involves Mrs Donoghue, the Well Meadow Cafe in Paisley, an opaque coloured bottle of ginger beer, some ice cream and a decomposed snail. It's well worth a look at LexisNexis if you're interested. Paisley has also deserves this award because it has proven to its drive to invest in the local community and think long term. Creating a long term fund for investment in local cultural organisations, artists and community partners, Paisley has used this opportunity to lay the foundations for continued success and cultural enrichment. I'm also supporting this bid because Paisley not only deserves this award, it needs it. The UK City of Culture Award is designed to reward somewhere committed to cultural enrichment, but in the need of a boost. This perfectly describes Paisley. 
According to the 2016 Scottish Indicators of Multiple Deprivation, 25 per cent of Paisley's population are identified as income deprived. 30 per cent of children in the area are identified as living in severe deprivation, some of which suffer the highest deprivation rates in Scotland. Being named as a UK city of culture has been seen in previous years to increase tourism by up to 50 per cent. This translates into a multi-million pound boost to the local economy, an opportunity that cannot be ignored. Finally, I am supporting Paisley's bid because Scotland stands to benefit. Sitting next door to Glasgow International Airport, increased tourism in Paisley would draw global attention and create a welcome economic boost. Measures including the transformation of Paisley Museum into an international class destination will not only have local advantages, but also increase the international appeal of the town. Another great opportunity for Scotland. In closing, I offer my full support for the motion and wish Paisley the best of luck in their bid for UK City of Culture 2021. This title is not only in Paisley's best interests, but also in Scotland's. Following the wise words of former Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli, I plan to keep an eye on Paisley and hope to see it win the 2021 award. Thank you very much, Mr Gold. And I call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Mary Fee. Mr Gibson, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would first like to thank my fellow buddy, George Adam, for securing today's debate on Paisley's bid to be UK City of Culture 2021. It has been scientifically proven that Paisley is, in fact, the centre of the universe. And even MSPs like me, who do missionary work elsewhere in the west of Scotland, think fondly <laughs> of our hometown and its suburbs like Joan McAlpine's Gourock. Uh, my near-identical twin, Gerard Butler, is one of many famous buddies. <laughs> Others include Gavin Newlands MP and a host of industrialists, scientists and entrepreneurs. However, given the short time available on the subject of this debate, we should consider those who have contributed in a direct cultural sense, such as actors David Tennant, Tom Conte, Phyllis Logan and Fulton Mackay, musicians Paolo Nottini, Jerry Rafferty, David Sneddon and Kenneth McKellar, painter Alexander Gowdy, architects Thomas Graham Abercrombie and John Hutchison, playwright John Byrne, sculptor Sandy Stoddard and cinematographer Michael McDonough, amongst many, many others. Paisley is not a suburb of Glasgow. It is a town in its own right at the heart of Renfrewshire. The town's patron saint is St Mirren, the founder of a church at the site of Paisley Abbey. There is also a street in Paisley named St Mirren Street. In 1922, Paisley's renowned football team with that name won the Barcelona Cup, and the commemorative poster is on my wall upstairs. Whilst the fortunes of both clubs have diverged in the decades since, I am confident that if St Mirren continues to play as they have so far this season, then we will be hot favourites to win the Scottish League One Championship in 2018. <laughs> Paisley Patton was made famous the world over by the Coates family and represents the legacy of Paisley's one-time place at the centre of the world's textile industry. Resembling a twisted teardrop, the fig-shaped Paisley is of Iranian origin. Some design scholars believe it is the convergence of a stylized floral spray and a cypress tree a Zoroastrian symbol of life and eternity. It is a bent cedar and the tree Zarathustra planted in paradise, a sign of strength, the resistance, and also modesty, traits for which Paisley buddies are rightly famous. Paisley's mills have long closed, but the impact of Paisley patterns can still be seen throughout the world. Paisley's history is fascinating, but often forgotten outside the town itself. Ian Jack, writing in The Guardian, said, and I quote, There's probably no more unjustly neglected town in these islands. There is nowhere of comparable size. 77,000 people that is such a rich architectural, industrial and social history and that once mattered so much to the world. It's for that reason that I would like to use this opportunity to touch on the town's positive future should it be named the UK City of Culture 2021, or rather when. Paisley's rich architectural culture runs through the town from Paisley Abbey and the town hall down the high street to the museum, Coates Observatory and Coates Memorial Church, often described as the Baptist Cathedral of Europe. Paisley has the highest concentration of listed buildings anywhere in Scotland outside Edinburgh and is fortunate to have two great education institutions in the shape of West College Scotland and the University of the West of Scotland. The guidance that the Department for Culture, Media and Sport issued in 2014 says... 
UK City of Culture should be expected of a high quality cultural programme that builds and expands our local strengths and reaches a wide variety of audiences, creating a demonstrable economic impact and catalyst for regeneration, as well as contributing to community cohesion and health and well-being. Securing the tech will bring hundreds of thousands of visitors to Renfrewshire. It will generate an economic gain of 50 million, create hundreds of jobs for local people and instill confidence in the town, helping to transform Paisley's image nationally and cement a deeper sense of civic pride. Importantly, the lasting legacy of being awarded a city of culture will help tackle poverty in an innovative way, making it easier for every local family to access cultural activities. Presiding officer, Paisley has much to offer. It has, but if anyone researches its proud history, will come across countless examples where the people of Paisley rose and overcame uh, many obstacles. Winning the City of Culture will serve as another example of Paisley seizing an opportunity to shape a new, positive future. Thank you. I call Mary Fee to be followed by Jamie Green. Ms Fee, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And as we have heard, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli is quoted as saying, keep your eye on Paisley. And today I'm glad the Scottish Parliament is. And can I take this opportunity to thank George Adam for lodging this motion and helping to promote the Paisley bid for 2021 UK City of Culture. I am proud to support Paisley, a town I have come to represent for nearly 10 years, both as a councillor and as an MSP. The whole of Renfrewshire has a long history from the 6th and 7th century when St Mirren was said to have established the Paisley settlement through to the time of the House of Stuart in the 14th and 15th century and on to the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s that made Paisley a centre for textiles across the world. And it is this rich history that is the basis of the bid for 2021 City of Culture. People take a great pride in Paisley and it's those people who have continued the legacy of Sir Thomas Coates to make the town great. And can I take this moment to congratulate Councillor Mark McMillan, who's in the, the gallery today, for his leadership of Renfrewshire Council and his initiative to get the town rallied behind this grand idea. Councillor McMillan has already announced his retirement from local politics as of May. However, I am sure he will continue to play a strong role in ensuring Paisley wins the UK City of Culture bid. And presiding officer, there are many famous and celebrated people in music, art and literature who have placed the town of Paisley on the cultural map. And George Adam in his motion has re referenced a few of these. We also have a hidden set of Paisley champions. These are the women who helped shape our history and the women spearheading the campaign for the city of culture status. Historically, Paisley's strong thread-making traditions were supported by one of the largest female workforces in Europe. And govern rent strike hero Mary Barber was originally from nearby Kilbarkin. Paisley has a heritage of strong women and a noted rebellious side. Today we have Jean Cameron, director of the 2021 bid, leading the charge to change Paisley for the better. Amanda McMillan, one of only two female managing directors of a European airport helping to shape and boost our local economy. And politi politically strong women who have represented the area, such as Trish Godman, Wendy Alexander and Mary Black. A love and pride in Paisley's culture and heritage is woven into the fabric of the people of the town. And presiding officer, I can't think of any other town or city more deserving of the status of UK City of Culture. And I'll finish my contribution with the quotation I started from Benjamin Disraeli. Keep your eyes on Paisley. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I call uh, Jamie Green to be followed by Ross Greer. Mr Green, please. Uh, it is with breaking news, Deputy Presiding Officer, that I can confirm to the Chamber today that Santa also loves Paisley. Today's Paisley Express uh, reports a meeting between Provost Anne Hall and the great man himself, who said that uh, how much he loves Paisley and came from Lapland to tell her so. I would like to congratulate George Adam for securing this uh, debate, but also the team behind the bid who put so much hard work into it. Uh, the UK City of Culture competition offers a, a very unique opportunity for any city in the UK to demonstrate, promote and celebrate its culture. Cities far and wide have put their names forward over the years, from Plymouth to Dundee. And even though we're only a few terms into this competition, 
Uh, we've already seen some fantastic cities win the prize and reap the benefits. Uh, Northern Ireland's uh, London Derry. Derry became the first and Kingston upon Hull became victorious last time. But so far, Scottish cities have fallen short. Only Dundee has managed to make the shortlist. So I say it's time that Scotland took home the prize. If Hull was once uh, the winning city because, and I quote, it was a city coming out of the shadows, then surely Paisley must be considered as a city of spirit and courage. Paisley's mills once weaved silk, fabric, shawls and textiles for the world. Nearly 10,000 people, most of them women, once filled the town to work in those mills. But like many other great industrial towns, it suffered the decline of these factories. But that didn't stop Paisley uh, resurging, with iconic crooners like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, who wore the Paisley pattern on silk smoking jackets at their Las Vegas shows. But Paisley's also seen some tough and turbulent times, as been mentioned, but its inhabitants have always showed spirit and courage on more than one occasion, like when Paisley was bombed by the Luftwaffe during the Second World War, or when its weavers took to the streets in the Radical War in 1819, as George Adam recounts. But its indefatigable courage to recover, rebuild and inspire is one of its most defining characteristics. In my view, it should become the UK city of culture because of that resilience and its ability to reinvent itself in good times and, and bad. Uh, Paisley's long influenced popular culture. For a town with just 77,000 people, it has punched way above its weight. From Phyllis Logan in Downton Abbey to Jerry Drafferty in Baker Street. From David Tennant crossing space and time to Paolo Nettini crossing musical styles and tastes. Indeed, the doyen of political satire and news himself, Andrew Neil, is from Paisley, even if his tan says otherwise. <laughs> Culture is synonymous with Paisley. The Spree Festival sold over 4,000 tickets last year and was widely hailed as a great success. It was almost the west of Scotland's own fringe. Uh, Smaz Shot Day in July still celebrates Paisley's unique textile legacy and indeed is one of the oldest workers festivals in the world. We'll also be looking forward to hosting the Scott Trad Music Awards in December next year. But the benefits of becoming the UK City of Culture are very significant. The first winner saw a 50% increase uh, in visitors. So, but this is about so much more than just winning a title. It is about a collective endeavour to make Paisley a better place to live. But there is some work to be done. The all-important Glasgow Airport link via Paisley must still be built. Yes, parts of Paisley are indeed uh, deprived in Scotland, but I welcome that Renfrewshire Council is, is doing so much to try and tackle some of these issues. Of all the cities bidding for this award, surely Paisley epitomises the spirit, the courage, the cultural heritage and the ambition for the future that is worthy of its honour. So I too will be keeping my eyes on Paisley and I hope the judges will too. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I call Ross uh, Greer to be called by Neil Bibby. Mr Greer, please. A tight four minutes. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, like colleagues, I'd like to thank George Adam for giving us the opportunity to debate this today. Paisley is a wonderful town with a rich cultural history. It's a town that's been very much shaped by its industrial history, and one which could not be more deserving of 2021's City of Culture bid. The weaving industry in Paisley has given rise to world recognition, not just through the quality of the designs, most obviously the Paisley pattern, but also through the radical movements that have emerged from this history. The early 19th century artisan weavers played a key role in the 1820s radical war. As George Adam highlighted, they were so up for it that they started it before the 1820s. They went out on strike in an attempt to secure a more representative government, one that was responsive to their needs, not just the needs of the ruling class. Though brutally suppressed, this radical uprising did lead to lasting changes. Electoral reforms were eventually retained, uh, attained, most obviously the 1832 Reform Act, but not limited to that. Even Karl Marx in Das Kapital, a tome that I'm sure every member has read from front to back, <laughs> uh, drew on the example of weavers in Paisley, referring to, and I quote, the brave Scots of Paisley and the labour that they poured into their production of textiles. He highlighted Carlisle Sons and Company as one of the oldest and most respected companies producing cotton and linen in the west of Scotland, in operation as far back as 1752. Though, as you would expect, Marx took a dim view of the Carlyle family and a much more positive view of the workers in their mills. 
Unfortunately, though, Carlyle Sons & Company does not produce textiles in Paisley any longer. Indeed, textile production essentially stopped in the 90s. The weaving industry may be gone, but this rich cultural heritage is still visible, whether it's in the town hall paid by one old mill owner or the museum that was paid for by another, or in the multitude of streets named after the industry, Dyer's Wind, Cotton Street, Thread Street as the most obvious examples. However, the decline of that industry, along with shipbuilding and the broader process of deindustrialization in recent decades, has left Paisley with huge challenges. Fergus Lee Park has already been highlighted is one of the areas with the highest levels of deprivation in Scotland. Paisley Job Centre has the highest number of sanctions in the west of Scotland, a figure that we hope will drop with changes coming in as this parliament takes control over the work programme. And in the northwest of the city, almost one in three children live in poverty. But we know Paisley is a brilliant town, fantastic communities and individuals constantly working to improve their area. Indeed, Paisley is already a city of culture. This bid is about more than that. This bid is about ensuring that this rich cultural heritage can be put to good use to promote the town across this country and further afield and to address the problems that, are fa that face everyone in that community today. Whether Paisley wins the City of Culture 2021 bid or not, the very process of the bid will help, though I do feel for uh, any judge that votes against it when George Adam catches up with them. But Remshire Council has already set out to invest millions in supporting local arts and cultural initiatives, as well as upgrading the Paisley Museum. By winning this award, though, however, much more can be done to raise the profile of this historic town and to encourage the tourism and investment that it needs and to give the community better access to better cultural experiences that they've had before. The City of Culture bid should also be used to revive Paisley's bid to become a city, a recognised city. Paisley already has all the attributes of a city. The legacy of this bid should look beyond 2021 and to the status of Paisley itself for the decades and the centuries to come. Thank you very much. I call Neil Bibby to be followed by Tom Arthur. Thank you very much, Mr Bibby. Thank you, President Officer. At the outset, let me thank George Adam on bringing forward this debate to help the bid. And let me thank all those members who have signed the motion before us and spoken uh, this debate, recognising Paisley as a fitting candidate for UK City of Culture in 2021. And let me congratulate all those who have made Paisley's 2021 City of Culture bid a reality. I want to pay tribute to the sterling work of the local partnership who have been driving the bid forward. We wouldn't be having this debate or event without the vision and leadership of Renfrewshire Council, from Council Leader Mark McMillan and the other elected members, and from the bid director, Jean Cameron, and every single member of staff at Renfrewshire Council. But I also want to uh, pay tribute to the enthusiasm of all those people and organisations from across the whole community who have been right behind this bid, many of whom will be joining us in the garden lobby this evening. And I sense there is a real momentum behind this bid in the local area. As someone uh, who was born in Paisley, who lives in Paisley, and who, like George Adam, represents the town, I am proud to be speaking in support of our bid to be UK City of Culture. We know, as we've heard, Paisley has a very proud past, a small market town transformed by the Industrial Revolution, Paisley becoming a world-leading producer of textiles. The weavers, the thread mills, the world-renowned Paisley pattern, the way in which uh, the industry shaped our economic history and the culture of our community. It's all part of the town's social tapestry. And as members have mentioned, Paisley has given the world great actors, poets, musicians and sports people. Gerard Butler, Robert Tannehill, Jerry Rafferty, Archie Gemmell, uh, to name a few. And Mary Fee was quite right to acknowledge the work and contribution of many, many of Paisley's women to Paisley's culture. Paisley's built heritage represents one of the most impressive townscapes in the whole of Scotland. As the motion before us states, there are over 100 listed buildings in Paisley Town Centre, which is second only to Edinburgh. The 850-year-old abbey, which still stands in the centre of Paisley to this day, links us to our pre-industrial past. And it's not just some kind of monument. It's still a living, active building with uh, tours and concerts and services all year round. There's a great deal to commend in Paisley's bid, and there is much to celebrate. But this is more than a celebration of heritage and our creativity. This is about the future and a positive future. The kind of accolade and recognition and investment it can bring to Paisley can be a real catalyst for change. I know, we all know, 
that Paisley faces its fair share of challenges as a community. But we can overcome them, and Paisley has many great opportunities ahead of it too. Winning this title would be a huge economic boost for the town, as we've heard. It's projected to bring around 1 million visitors to Renfrewshire in 2021, and the economic impact is expected to be in the region of £50 million. Every penny that visitors spend on our high street will support our local economy and boost our town centre, helping us create and sustain hundreds of new jobs for local people in the Paisley area. A successful bid will help every child and every family in Renfrewshire across access um, cultural activities, breaking down barriers to social inclusion. This bid has the potential to transform Paisley. It's a platform in which we can promote the town across Britain and around the world. We are already seeing it as an opportunity to build a new sense of pride in Paisley, not just civic pride, but a real appreciation of where our town has come from and where it is going. And as a city of culture, we can host more and more highlights from the British, Britain's cultural calendar. That means bringing more arts festivals, music festivals, great performances, concerts and awards shows to Renfrewshire. I'm proud of Paisley and I'm proud of this bid. I wish the bid team every success and I hope uh, they win this very special distinction for the town. For now, I want to call on all people of Paisley, indeed all the people of Renfrewshire and fellow MSPs, to back the bid and together let's put Paisley on the map as UK's City of Culture in 2021. Yep. Thank you, Mr Bibby. Uh, we're very pressed for time, so I want to thank Tom Arthur and Stuart McMillan, who follows, for cutting your speeches to two minutes. It can be done. I've done it myself. Mr Arthur, first, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am delighted to have the opportunity to participate in this debate, recognising Paisley's positioning to be City of Culture in 2021. And I'd also like to congratulate Paisley's MSP, George Adam, on securing this debate. Now, Kenneth Gibson said that Paisley is not a suburb of Glasgow, and I could not agree more with that. But I was sorely tempted to refer to it as a suburb of Greater Borheed, but I think I'd be pushing my luck if I did that. Presiding officer, being from Barhead, mine and Greytoon has meant that Paisley has played a big part in my life. Trips to Paisley are among, my, are among my most vivid childhood memories, from the happy such as seeing the lights on Christmas Eve or performing in Paisley Town Hall, to the less enjoyable such as nerve-wracking piano exams in the Abbey and getting hauled around the Paisley Centre in August to buy a new school uniform, marking the end of yet another summer holiday. Just as Paisley was another present feature of my childhood, having the honour of now representing the diverse communities of Renfrewshire South, which mark the southern and western boundaries of Paisley, means that Paisley is still a big part of my life. And that's because what happens in Paisley can have a significant impact upon my constituents. Presiding officer, the reality is that Paisley becoming 2021 City of Culture would not just be a tremendous achievement for that proud and ancient town, it could also be a boon to the surrounding communities of Renfrewshire and beyond. From increased economic activity to civic renewal, the positive effects of Paisley 2021 have the potential to be felt far and wide. The predicted 1 million visitors to Paisley 2021 would, for example, have the opportunity to take in many attractions in my constituency of Renfrewshire South, such as the Weaver's Cottage in Kilbarkin and the Castle Semple Visitor Centre in Country Park in Lochwinnock, the gateway to the Clyde Muirshield Regional Park. Paisley 2021 is an opportunity to put a town whose, known, whose name is known around the globe firmly back on the map. And not only did it present an opportunity to celebrate the rich cultural history of Paisley, it would, show us, it would show that as well as having a proud past, Paisley still has a promising future. Presiding officer, Paisley would make a fitting and well-deserved City of Culture in 2021. And while Paisley would, of course, be the epicentre of activity as City of Culture, the effect would be felt across the region. A successful bid would be a huge opportunity, not just for Renfrewshire, but for the whole of the West of Scotland. I'm therefore very pleased to join my colleagues from across the chamber in wishing Paisley's bid to be 2021 City of Culture the very best of luck. Not quite, Mr Arthur. I have done it, though. Yes, uh, I now call the last speaker. Thank you very much for doing that, gentlemen. Stuart McMillan. Thank you very much, President Officer. First of all, I'd like to congratulate my colleague George Adam for securing this debate. And as we all know, President Officer, George Adam is not shy about highlighting Paisley in the Parliament. President Officer, I am happy to support the Paisley 2021 bid. As members will know, there's a friendly rivalry between uh, Paisley and Greenock, and much of it emanates from our footballing clubs, uh, St Mirren and Greenock Morton, respectively, and with, with George Adams supporting St Mirren, and I support Greenock Morton. We always have a bit of fun, which I am particularly enjoying at the moment, with Morton being 16 points ahead and six places ahead of St Mirren in the league. But notwithstanding this, 
This bid is something that all of us in the West of Scotland can actually get behind. I know that Inverclyde Council have backed the bid, but I also would encourage as many people as possible in Inverclyde to back Paisley's bid, because certainly there are benefits for my constituency also. Now, I, I want to highlight a couple of reasons why I believe Paisley should win. Paisley Abbey is a fantastic building and one with a special characteristic. Its elegance and charm make it for me one of Scotland's iconic buildings. I've attended a few services in the Abbey and I've never, I've never failed to be impressed by its atmosphere. The second example is uh, the people. I worked in Paisley for four years and also had my old regional office in the town for six years. I found the people to be similar to those in Inverclyde, friendly, warm, ambitious for the town and also funny. Uh, there's always a special characteristic about uh, working class communities that can open up a vibrancy in the arts and culture. And Paisley's history is uh, certainly a story that buddies need to tell. Nobody's going to tell it for them. To me, Paisley's history and also its pattern are stories that should be retold time and time again. Historical events can become cultural and economic drivers for our communities. And in Paisley's case, there is an abundant amount of that history. Now, certainly I mentioned that in terms of benefits certainly to Inverclyde. I mean, we are just down the road. Uh, I mean, we will certainly get benefits if it pays that it's accessible with this, whether it's the, from the main tourism element, from seeing the golf courses, outdoor pool and Gurick, to name just some. But, presiding officer, uh, good luck to the bid team, good luck to Paisley, and on this issue, both Greenock and Paisley can unite for the benefit of both communities. Well done, Mr McMillan. You beat Mr Arthur. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary till 5.51, please, Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you very much. And I'd like to thank members for their contributions. Clearly, there is a lot of support across the Chamber for Paisley's bid to become 2021 UK City of Culture. And I welcome Renfrewshire's Council's clear ambitions to use culture and creativity as a catalyst to promote regeneration. I've met Renfrewshire Council early in their campaign to hear of their ambitions around Paisley, and my officials have also met with them since then. Presiding officer, I'm mindful, however, that there are other Scottish cities and areas who have indicated or may still yet indicate an interest uh, to bid to become 2021 UK City of Culture, given the process has not yet launched. The Scottish Government and our agencies have recent uh, valuable experience to help advise bidding cities through this process and look at opportunities related to their plans. And my officials have also been in contact with the UK Department of Culture, Media, uh, Media and Sport, who run this competition to ensure details of the bidding process are finalised as soon as possible to help Scottish cities and areas develop their plans. But let's focus on Paisley. Paisley is a proud and confident town, rooted in culture and heritage, a town which not only cherishes its diverse heritage and traditions, but also continually seeks to create further opportunities to share and to celebrate. And indeed, I was delighted to announce earlier today that Paisley's International Festival of Weaving in July 2017 will be one of the funded signature events for the Scottish Year of History, Heritage and Archaeology. Paisley's exciting UK City of Culture bid seeks to transform Paisley's future by using its unique cultural heritage uh, as the home of the world-renowned Paisley Patton and one-time centre of the global textile industry to attract tourism investment as well as to promote further job growth and economic stability across all of Renfrewshire. The bid will show the breadth and depth of Rep Paisley's cultural assets, value of its heritage and its potential for economic, social and cultural regeneration as it celebrates its rich textiles heritage while looking forward to a future built on innovation, enterprise, talent and community. The Paisley uh, 2021 bid are doing a fantastic job highlighting the strength of Paisley's bid and the town's drive for UK City of Culture in 2021. Nationally, our national performing companies are already active in Paisley, demonstrated through the Royal Scottish National Orchestra's five-year collaboration with Paisley's Spree Festival and Scottish Ballet's continued partnership with the Kibble Care and Education Centre in Paisley. The project in particular has introduced many young people uh, excluded from mainstream education due to their additional social and behavioural needs to creative dance and ballet. In addition, in addition Scottish Ballet have had 13 children from the Paisley area joining their associate programme, which provides vocationally classically based training for boys and girls from primary six to secondary five to develop confident dedicated and motivated dancers. And if the bid is successful, they should think of reviving the ballet that was based on the fantastic movements of Archie Gemmell when he scored that amazing goal during the World Cup. So I'm delighted that through this bid, our national performing companies are, are in discussions with the 2021 bid team in Paisley to look at the opportunities to work closely with this community to deliver programmes that enrich people's lives and enhance Scotland's cultural heritage. 
I recognise the ambition of the Council, the people of Paisley, who are to be praised for looking to secure a prosperous and successful future, firmly rooted in Paisley's cultural heritage, which is both extraordinarily rich and historically deep. The 10-year Paisley Town Centre uh, heritage strategy uh, was a major step forward in bringing this ambition to reality. The work around the Abbey has already been developing, and it's good to see success in that progress in that area. Paisley has much to be proud of. It deserves a future which is every bit as great as its past. We all want to see Paisley succeed. Paisley is different and Paisley is special. Paisley is unique, perhaps as much as the mover of this motion, George Adam, and I expect everyone to congratulate him in bringing uh, this motion to the Chamber. I wish everyone well for tonight's event in Parliament. I'm very sorry that I can't join you, but I'm speaking at the 40th anniversary of the Federation of Scottish Theatre at the Roxburgh Hotel in approximately 10 minutes. So I wish you all well in, uh, in your celebrations and your activity. The process of putting the bid together is a great achievement. It unleashes the spirit of Paisley, and I hope everybody that's involved can take the best from what they've achieved to date, and I wish everyone the best for the future. Thank you. Now members will understand why we couldn't extend the debate and there is a prize for counting the number of times Paisley is mentioned uh, and George Adam will be in charge of the prize. Thank you very much and I close this meeting of Parliament.